break. Yeah, we'd arranged for a hot date in a hotel room. Just me and her. Oh, hang on. Lovely to see you, uh, Anne, on our special date here in the hotel. I've got your flowers in and... Oh. Who's Sorry this? To what, what, who's, who's, who's this strange co-star you brought with you? This is my chaperone. Yeah? Yeah, he keeps me on the up and up. It just when you come in and get interviewed by scary people, he... I do it all. I make tea, do makeup, yeah. general pep talks. Hand massages. Hand massages. They're very important. Don't do the okay. feet. That's like a good service. I'll, uh, I'll close, inquire yeah. about your prices yeah. afterwards. This is the book of the film. Well, the film was of the book. Um, what a pressure, because this million copies, the highest selling book in the UK last year, mm. seemingly everyone's already read it. Yeah. And then the pressure of making it work on, on screen. How was it initially when you came along and did you think of that pressure? Yeah, I mean, I'd be lying if I said that I, that I didn't. Uh, the pressure was definitely there. Um, and then it became, after the first few weeks, it became the pressure that you always feel, which is just how do you make a good movie? Jim, you hadn't read it though, is that right? I was pleased actually because I was able to just read it as a great script and see that it was going to make, be a, you know, would work as a great movie and I sort of connected with it as, as a screenplay and then was able to sort of dive into the book and, you know, discover the whole, you know, flesh and bones of Em and Dex's relationship and their lives. Because the joy of this book is that it isn't just for girls, is it? I mean, it is very, very funny. A lot of boys really like it. And I managed to read it all by myself. I only had to get my mum to help me with a few mm. chapters. A so few, your, your copy's really dog-eared. I think you've maybe read it more than once. I really creased it up a lot beforehand. But it, <laughs> but it, but it is very readable to blokes. I don't think blokes just relate to Dexter and girls relate to Emma. I think there's a bit of both in everyone, you know. Mm. I related to Emma on certain levels and I related to Dexter on others. I always thought you were more like Emma and I was more like Dexter. Yeah. <laughs> we were totally misguided. <laughs> we totally <laughs> totally were. Just film, an, film it again, do the alternative one. Yeah. I, I would do that. We should do one where we sort of have an accident and we swap bodies or something. Oh, like nice, like, like, like an 80s Disney comedy. Yeah. <laughs> well, look at you. Huh? You even you look like a writer. Writer in Paris. Mm. There's, a, there's a word for this, isn't there? Uh, butch. <laughs> I was going to say gamine. What do you look like? Me? A screwed up divorcee. <laughs> I thought, uh, actually, some people, when they read the book, they said, oh, you're a bit like Dexter. And I, I, before I read it, I thought, well, that must be good. It's <laughs> suave, sophisticated. Then I kind of, man. Yeah, I was reading the book, and it gets to the bit where it goes, is this the most odious man on television? Yeah. <laughs> and it was at that point I thought, I don't like my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and the difficulty for you both covering 20 years, ageing and stuff, filming scenes out of sequence. There was one day where I was four ages, and by the end of it, I mean, it, it could get overwhelming at times, but that's really where the book came in handy, actually, because wherever you were, you always had a guide right there, and if you felt a bit unsure of where you were at, you would find a line, and you would just think, oh, right, this is the year where Emma's gained a bit of weight and she has to get through her skirts from underneath rather than pull them up. <laughs> I know exactly how she's feeling. <laughs> and, so, um, and so the book was really, really helpful in kind of keeping that straight. Excellent. Well, guys, that is the end of exciting part one of this interview. We are going to have part two, so lots more to come. I can feel the excitement <laughs> just sort of emanating <laughs> from over there on the sofa. Really? Because I'm trying to contain it. If you can feel it, I'll do a better job. Say, well, you know, save that all for part two, and the guys will come back. She's very beautiful. Of course she has absolutely no sense of humour. Just as well, sense of humour's overrated. Goofing around all the time. The only time Ian ever really made me laugh was when he fell down the stairs. Well, you know, Sylvie says she doesn't like to laugh. Doesn't really like what it does to her face. <laughs> Emma's from Yorkshire. Mm -hmm. How hard was that? You know, getting the Yorkshire dialect was, was hard enough, but then you have to figure, then it changes over 20 years. So finding a way to have the accent grow and change subtly um, that, that was a big challenge. You can't just go for every scene by just going, hey up, love, can you? <laughs> it, it isn't that easy. Let's have a bath. <laughs> Let's have a bath, every scene. Hey up, go have a cup of tea. I, Emma was obsessed with getting clean in this movie. I just wanted to have a bath in every scene. I heard that uh, to get this right, you ate lots of Yorkshire puddings, Wensleydale cheese. You watched Emmerdale and you listened to Def Leppard. I didn't listen to Def Leppard and I, what was the type of cheese? Wensleydale. I don't know what that is. It's Yorkshire. Oh! Bell didn't do your research properly. <laughs> but I did, I did eat Yorkshire pudding and watch Emmerdale. As a special treat, we got you this. You got me cheese? <laughs> got oh, tea. Tea's better. Yeah? Thank Yorkshire you. Thank you. Yorkshire tea. Thank you very much. We'll that later. <gasps> Thank you. Right. The thing about this film is a lot of people are saying it's like the crying challenge. Can you get through the film without crying? Mm -hmm. I went with our weather girl called Lucy. Here's Lucy. Hi, Lucy. 
Lovely Lucy. Hello, Lucy. OK, Jim, you made Lucy cry. How do you feel making a girl like that cry, Jim? I feel very good about it, yeah. I feel like we did our job right. Yeah. That's like a greatest trophy I yeah, could... Yeah, uh, thank you, can you very much. Before and after, don't you? Sure. You know, to camera, just say sorry about the tears. Sorry about the tears, I apologise.